Hello and welcome to another Router Gods video. My name is Humphrey Chung. We're going to continue on our Cisco Packet Tracer series. This is going to be video number two. And we're going to load up our three switch and three PC topology that we did in our previous video. So if you need to load it up, go to File and Open and just find that .pkt file. And hopefully you named it something like three switch triangle or something like that. And when it loads up, you'll see something like this. First of all, we want to get rid of our toolbars on the bottom and the right hand side. We don't really need them anymore. So we'll go up to View, Toolbars, and uncheck the right toolbar and the bottom toolbar. That will give you a little bit more space to work around with. Just makes the interface a lot cleaner. So the goal of this video is we're going to figure out which ports need to be set in access mode and which ports need to be set in trunk mode. And that's it, we're not gonna do anything else. And that's because when you're first starting off in CCNA, you wanna build a solid foundation. You wanna take things a little bit slow. So we're gonna log into switch one. And actually before we log in there, notice that we have a PC connected to fast zero one. We have links going out to switch two at the top and switch three in the bottom right. So there's two type of types of ports in switching. There's an access port. Those ports are generally ports pointed towards an end host. So what an end host is, is it's a computer usually, could be a desktop, a laptop, could be a server, a nice Dell rack mounted server that costs $15,000. It could be going to a VMware host which is an even usually an even bigger server, lots of RAM, and it's virtualizing dozens of computers, dozens of servers below that. It could also be something like a printer. So access port, when we think access port, generally if you're in the enterprise world, it's probably going to be to a computer. Now, if you're going to a switch, like we are with gig 02 and gig 01, so switch to switch links, generally are in trunking mode. They're trunking mode because they are going to need to contain or carry multiple VLAN information. We're going to talk about that in a later video, but for now, if you think about links between switches, probably going to be a trunk port. Links from a switch to a computer or switch to a server, that's going to be an access port. So let's set that up. Let's go to switch one, click on CLI, I'm going to move this over to the right. That way we could see the switch one and PC zero that we have to work, work with. Hit enter a couple times. We'll go into enable mode. And if we want to see the VLANs that we have already, we show VLAN brief. It's not going to be that exciting because all we get is VLAN one. To see your trunk ports, we're going to do show interface trunk, show int trunk. Now notice that nothing comes up, even though I have two links to two other switches. And the reason is on a 3560, we are in a, those ports are in a certain mode that they don't like to trunk with each other. We're gonna change that in a couple minutes, but for now we're gonna start off with the access ports. So I need to specify that port FAST01 is connected to a PC. Now I can do that very easily by going to conf t, go into the particular interface, interface fast 01, and I do switch port mode access. Switch port mode access. Now, if you were curious what other ports there are, there's switch port mode trunk that's going to be going to the switches. We also have something called dynamic mode, and that's a Cisco proprietary mode that will try to help you figure out whether it's actually going to let the switch decide whether to become a trunk based on whether the other side wants to become a trunk. So they kind of have to agree to come up as trunks or whether to not come up as trunks. On a 3560, it's actually set to dynamic and there's a two sub modes. There's auto and desirable. Auto means that your side will come up as a trunk if the other side wants to come up as a trunk. You're kind of waiting for the other side. 
Now the problem with this is since all three of our switches are 3560s, basically all the switches are waiting for all the other switches to become a, a trunk and no one is willing to step up to the plate, so to speak. Desirable is kind of the opposite. It really wants to become a trunk. So if you set both sides to desirable, that's good. Both sides want to become a trunk, they will become trunks. If you set one side to desirable and one side to auto, that's fine as well. Because one side says, hey, I'll become a trunk. Then the other side, the auto side says, well, cool, you're going to become a trunk. I will become a trunk just as well. So you can think of desirable as he wants to be a leader. That's fine. Auto mode is he's kind of a sheep. He's kind of shy. He's waiting for someone else to make the decision because he can't make a decision by himself. And by the way, switch port mode dynamic, that's going to be for trunk ports. We're not going to set dynamic towards, we generally don't want to set dynamic ports towards PCs. Now when you start getting into the CCIE level of stuff, a lot of this goes out the window in terms of they're going to have you make some wacky configurations that you would never even think about doing in CCNA and CCNP. And that's because they want to see how well you know the protocol. So it's not really essentially a real world test. It's just, well, the spec says the commands let us do this. Let's do it in the craziest way that we can. Okay, so setting it to access switch port mode access. And this next command, we're not going to necessarily need it for this one because all we have right now is one VLAN, VLAN 1. But normally what you would do is you would do switch port access VLAN and then put the VLAN number. Doesn't hurt to type this in, it's fine. But if all you have is VLAN 1 on your switch, you don't need to type this because basically the switch assumes that the of course you're going to put this on Axis VLAN 1. All right, let's exit out. And if you show VLAN brief, what you're going to see is VLAN 1 is in FAST01. So FAST01, FAST02, basically all these ports that you see listed here are running VLAN 1. Okay, and that's fine. We're going to leave that access port for now. Now we're going to work on the trunk ports. And we're going to go to int gig 02. Let's go with 2 for now. Port gig 02 is going to this top switch right here. We're going to do switch port mode trunk. Switch port mode trunk. Now it's giving me an error. It's saying an interface whose trunk encapsulation is set to auto cannot be configured to trunk mode. So switch port mode trunk hard codes this port to force it to become a trunk. So there is no dynamic, okay, I'm waiting for the other side. Will I become a, a, a trunk? None of that. It basically says, nope, this port, trunk, end of story. Encapsulation. The way we take these VLANs, so a trunk has multiple VLANs, the way we carry that VLAN information is with a protocol called 802.1Q. 802.1Q. And that is what's going to be wrapping our information so that we can carry the VLANs across to the other switch. And we have to specify this. Now, in modern Cisco switches, all you have is 802.1Q, but back in the old days, the Stone Ages, we had another protocol called ISL, Interswitch Link. You're not going to find that anymore except if you work on really old gear, but it might be out there. So to manually specify an encapsulation, what we're going to do is switch port, trunk, encapsulation. Now when I do question mark, you can see it's it's only one deal there. And hit enter. Now we're going to hit our up arrow a couple times, switch port mode trunk. And now it's going to let that through. And you can see 
I got a message here. It looks pretty bad. It's like, Gig02 is down. Oh, no. Don't worry about it. We have this thing called spanning tree, and basically the VLANs and the ports are freaking out because they need to go through this spanning tree election. So they need to determine who's going to be the root bridge, who's going to, which links are going to be up or down, stuff like that. We're going to talk about that in a later video. But don't, don't be scared. You can see the ports now have turned back to green. And now if I end out of there and show interface trunk, I'm going to have a trunk. Now notice when I did show interface trunk before, I didn't have anything. That's because no, no interfaces were trunking. So that's one of the first things you want to do in troubleshooting. If you ever have VLAN problems, if a computer can't ping another computer, and you want to really very quickly figure out what's going on, show interface trunk, bam. If you have no trunks, that's going to be a red flag right there. Okay, let's quickly put gig01 into trunking mode. Int gig01. We already know we have to set the encapsulation, switch board trunk incap.1q, switch board mode trunk. And we're good there. We're going to wait a little bit. Now, if you show interface trunk, it's going to show that our two ports, gig01 and gig02, are now trunking. All right, so that's a pretty easy video of how to set ports in access mode and trunking mode. We also talked a little bit about the dynamic desirable and dynamic auto. Dynamic auto basically waits for the other side to see if he wants to become a trunk. Dynamic desirable is like, nope, I really want to become a trunk. And the quirky thing with 3560s is your default mode is dynamic auto. Dynamic auto. So both sides will not become trunks. They'll just kind of, kind of look at each other and go, well, do you want to go first? Do you want to go first? It's kind of like two cars get to the stoplight and you're just kind of waiting for the other guy to go. It's really bad if both people are timid. But if one person takes charge, then it turns out okay. And that's exactly what happens here. Now, when we did switch port mode trunk, it's, nope, we're forcing this to become a trunk. No questions about it. And that's usually what you want to do between two switches. All right, that was another video from Router Gods. My name's Humphrey Chung. Thanks for watching.